In this video, you're going to learn how to work with the rational zero test. When you're working with polynomials, if you want to find the possible rational zeros, what you do is you take all the factors of the constant divided by all the factors of the leading coefficient. Now, this only works if the coefficients, meaning the numbers in front of the variables, are integers. So if they're radicals or imaginary numbers, this is not going to work. So again, what you do is you think about all the numbers that go into 6. That would be like uh, plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 6, divided by all the factors of the uh, leading coefficient. In this case, it would be 1 or 2. So you take any numerator with any denominator. So for example, it could be 1 over 1, or 1 over 2, which is a half, or 2 over 2, which is 1, we listed that already, 3 over 1, 3 halves, 6 over 1, 6 over 2, positive or negative. And these just give us a list of the possible rational zeros. So when we talk about the zeros, these are the x-intercepts. It's where it crosses the x-axis. And the way we check to see if they're actually uh, zeros or not is we do synthetic division. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to test, uh, like say, for example, 3 over 1, 3. So what we do is we do our synthetic division. We take the numbers in front of the variables here, so 2, 5, negative 1 and negative 6. Remember, if there's any missing terms, like if I go from x cubed to x to the first, I have to put a 0 because there's a missing term there. And then what we do is we just drop down that first number and we multiply on the diagonal and then we add straight down. We multiply on the diagonal and we add straight down and we multiply on the diagonal and we add straight down. And this last number, if it comes out to 0, that tells us that 3 is a 0, meaning it's going to be an x-intercept at 3. But in this case, you can see it didn't come out to 0, so 3 is not a 0. So what we'll do is let's try another quantity here. Let's say, for example, we do 1 over 1. Now, I normally start off with smaller numbers just because it makes the calculations a little bit easier. So, for example, let's go ahead and do 1. So we're going to take our coefficients, 2, 5, negative 1, and negative 6. We drop down the first number here, 2. We multiply on the diagonal, we add straight down. We multiply on the diagonal, we add straight down. Multiply on the diagonal, add straight down. Now notice we're getting zero here. That tells us that one is a zero and it's gonna cross the x-axis right here at one. Now, once you do the synthetic division and you get it down to a quadratic, see how we started with x cubed? It goes down by one degree each time. So this would be two x squared plus seven x plus six. You can factor it or do the quadratic formula to find the remaining zeros. So in this case, it looks like we can factor this. It's going to factor to, let's see, 2x and 1x. And this is going to be, uh, let's see, I'm trying to get 7. So this is going to be, um, let's see, what could this be here? Uh, it's going to be 2 and 3. So this way we got 3x and 4x, which adds up to our middle term 7x. 3 times 2 is 6, and 2x times x is 2x squared. Now, if we set these factors equal to 0, just make two mini equations, 2x plus 3 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. Here we can see that x equals negative 2 is one of our other zeros. And notice that's one of our possible zeros here. See, 2 over 1, positive or negative. And we can also uh, solve this one here. This is going to subtract 3 and divide by 2. So you can see that x equals negative 3 over 2, which again, that's also one of our rational zeros. So negative 3 over 2 is like a negative 1 and a half, so it's going to be right about here. And then notice that our leading coefficient's positive, so it's going to go up to the right. It's an odd degree, 3, so it's going to be the opposite direction for our left-end behavior. And you can find the y-intercept by putting 0 in for x, so that's going to come out to negative 6 right here. And then you can get a pretty good sketch of your graph. It's going to look something approximately like that. So let's take a look at another example. Okay, if you feel like you're getting the hang of this, see if you can try example number two here. We've got 3x cubed minus 10x squared minus 9x plus 4. We want to find the possible zeros, and we want to test to see which ones are actually uh, the zeros of this polynomial. Now remember, in order to apply this rational zero test, or this rational root theorem, as it's sometimes called, or this p over q, we want to make sure that these coefficients are integers, okay? So you want to make sure they're all uh, positive or negative uh, whole round numbers. We don't want any fractions, uh, radicals, imaginary numbers like that. Otherwise, it's not going to work. 
And then the next thing we want to do is we want to take all the factors of the constant, that's just this number here by itself, divided by all the factors of the leading coefficient, that's this number here in front of the highest powered term. So all the integers that go into four, positive or negative, is going to come out to one, two, and four, divided by all the factors of the leading coefficient, that's just going to be one and three. Now let's go ahead and write them all out this time. So we're going to have, <clears throat> let's see, we're going to have a, a negative three, uh, no, not negative three, sorry. We've got, uh, let's do them in order. We'll, let's do the positive ones first. We have one over one, which is one. Uh, we've got one third. We've got two. We've got two thirds, which would be right here. I'm trying to put them in order. We've got four over one, which is four. We've got four over three, which is four thirds, or one and one third. And it could be positive or negative. So I could actually, uh, for all of these, I'm just going to write plus or minus, okay, positive or negative. So now let's test them out. Let's see which ones are actually zeros. So say, for example, I'll start with a small number again. Let's say like one. So we're going to do our synthetic division. We've got three, negative 10, negative nine, and four. We drop down that first number. That's, okay, when you do synthetic division, that's the only thing that's a little bit different. You just have to drop down the first number. Then you just repeat this process of multiplying on the diagonal, add straight down, multiply on the diagonal, add straight down, multiply on the diagonal, add straight down, and if this last number is zero, that tells you that one is a zero or an x-intercept, but in this case, it didn't come out to zero, so one is not a zero. So let's go back to the drawing board. Let's try maybe negative one. So we've got negative one, and again, we write down our coefficients, three, negative 10, negative nine, and four, and remember, if there's a missing term, or there could even be two missing terms or three missing terms, you have to put a placeholder as zero. So we just follow that process of uh, dropping down the first number, and then you multiply on the diagonal, and you add straight down. You multiply on the diagonal, you add straight down, multiply on the diagonal, add straight down. Now see how we're getting zero remainder? That tells us that negative one is a zero, meaning it's gonna cross the x-axis right there at negative one. And it drops it down from x cubed to x squared when you do that synthetic division. Now, if it was, say it was just x cubed, you might want to try and do another one of the zeros or even try negative one a second time. You want to bring it down to a quadratic ideally because you can then factor it or do the quadratic formula to find the remaining zeros. Now, sometimes if it's a cubic, you might be able to factor it by grouping or another technique. But for this one, it looks like we're down to a quadratic. So let's see if we can factor this. So how would we factor this? Let's see. It looks like it's going to factor to 3x and 1x, that multiplies to 3x squared, and let's see, negative 4 and negative 1, that multiplies to 4, and then the inside, negative 1x, and outside, negative 12x, adds up to our middle term, negative 13x. Now, if we set these equal to 0, make too many equations, 3x minus 1 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0, add 4 to both sides, you can see x equals 4 is a 0, and if we solve this equation, add 1 to both sides, and divide by three, you can see we're getting x equals one third. So uh, that's gonna cross right here. Now, if we wanna get a good sketch of our graph, we know that the leading coefficient's positive. That tells us about the right end behavior. It's an odd degree, which means it's gonna go the opposite direction. If it was an even degree, it would go the same direction as the right end behavior, but in this case, it's odd, so it goes opposite. If we put zero in for x, we can solve for a y-intercept, which is gonna be four right here. And now we can get a pretty good sketch of our graph like that. Now you might be saying, Mario, why did you go to here? Why didn't you just go down to here? Or uh, you know that kind of a thing. That's what you're gonna learn about when you get into calculus. We're gonna talk about how to find the turning points or the maxes or mins. But for right now, this video is focusing more on how to find the possible rational zeros, how to test them, and realize that they're the x-intercepts. So if you want some more examples, you want some more practice, follow me over to that video right there and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you in that video.